With hundreds of different strains of cannabis on the market and more new strains arriving each day, looking for a specific seed or clone that fits your needs might seem like a daunting task. But it's actually quite simple as long as you understand how these strains work. Search for the optimal cannabis seed or clone to grow should start by looking for the effects you want the final product to produce. And instead of doing research on every strain you've heard of, it's actually much easier to work backwards by breaking down what makes each strain unique. Each cannabis strain provides different effects based on their total cannabinoid content. And this is often characterized by the amount of THC or tetrahydrocannabinol and CBD or cannabidiol that the strain has. Less common cannabinoids such as CBG, CBN, or CBC can also play a factor in what makes the strain's effect unique. So it's always best to start here and figure out just what your favorite strains contain. And then from there, look at all the other strains available that have a similar cannabinoid profile. For those that enjoy the flavors of the smoke when inhaled, this also requires you to take a look at the terpene and flavonoids of each strain, as these two compounds are what gives the smoke its distinct taste and flavor profiles. Once you've found a handful of strains that can match what you're looking for, it's time to narrow it down based on their growth characteristics. This is often harder to search for, but as long as the strain comes from a popular breeder, they'll have the plant's growing traits available online. The key things you'll want to look for and take into consideration are the plant's growth time, average indoor height, yields, and any other unique traits that could make it easier or harder to grow based on your grow situation. When it comes to growth times, around two months in the flowering stage is average, with some quicker finishing strains able to finish a week or two earlier and some strains requiring three to even four months in the flowering stage to develop. As for the average indoor plant height, this is typically less important since manipulating a plant's height with some growth techniques such as topping or low stress training as well as knowing when to flower the plant can all help mitigate the challenge of growing a tall plant indoors. However, if you do choose a strain that naturally grows short, it'll just be that much easier to work with. A plant's yield might seem quite important as well, since a high yielding plant will always reward you with a more bountiful harvest in the same amount of time when compared with a low yielding plant. But this shouldn't be a deal breaker if you're set on a specific strain, because as long as your plant is decent sized by harvest time, you'll still get a good amount of product even with the stingiest of strains when you compare just how much each plant can produce as opposed to buying it from a dispensary. As for some unique growing traits you should keep an eye out for, it's important to note that some strains are going to be more pest resistant than others which could help a plant resist mold, mildew in more humid environments. And while other plants might be really sensitive to things such as hot or cold temperatures, making it harder to grow indoors. So be sure to read all the notes a breeder provides about the nuances of each strain. Once a strain is decided on, the next choice is between starting with a seed or a clone. Clones are great because they not only give you a jump start on your grow, but can guarantee the growth pattern of a plant throughout its entire life cycle, since a clone will always mimic the same traits as a plant it was cut from. 
However, since clones can typically only be obtained locally, this is not an option for many people starting out. When starting with a seed, there are two types to choose from, normal and feminized. Normal seeds can grow into either male or female cannabis plants. And due to this, it requires the germination of multiple seeds per growth cycle to increase the chances of at least one female plant each time. Normal seeds do have the added benefit of allowing you to make your own cannabis seeds and are cheaper than feminized seeds when bought on the open market. But unless you're looking to breed your cannabis plants, feminized seeds are always more worth it since these seeds guarantee the gender of the cannabis plant to be a female, saving you a lot more time and space in the long run. Autoflower seeds are also available now for many of the most popular strains. And these are a great option as well, since as long as you don't make any mistakes that could stunt an autoflower's growth, it'll basically always beat out a normal photo period plant in terms of yield for the amount of time spent. Not to mention getting shorter grow cycles to just grow more times throughout the year. If you're new to growing though, a normal photo period seed is a lot more forgiving to mistakes and might be the best option to start with still until you're more familiar with the entire cannabis growing process. Now, as for where to find seeds, this is something that will be completely dependent on your local rules and regulations. Some areas allow for the purchase of seeds and clones locally, while others allow for the purchase of seeds online. So be sure to check with the ordinances pertaining to your area to see what options are available to you. Thank you.